Hello viewers. I want to keep this video short because I wanted to make a uh, some kind of update video on the Quantel HAL. Um, so I posted a video up uh, a few weeks ago now and um, I said I'd be coming along very shortly with one on Dylan and that didn't happen. Um, Unfortunately, uh, there was had a few commitments and we've just had Retrofest, so that was a whole weekend away with the Quantel DPB 7001, so um, that uh, took quite a bit of my time. So I want to give you a quick update because things have, have, have been happening with it and I just want to run through them and then hopefully in, I don't know, a, a week or so I should be able to make a proper update video. So um, as you can see, things have been progressing. Uh, the HAL um, has been cleaned um, as best as I can, um, but that is all reassembled, new filters, everything. The actual HAL machine itself, touch wood, seems to be working uh, really good. Now, the thing that I wanted to explore was the Dylan disc array, and that's this box that you can see on top. You probably haven't seen it before. Um, it's a... Uh, a 5U crate which houses all of the discs that uh, make up the Quantel Dylan disc array. Um, and it's this bit here that I've been working on um, off camera for um, a couple of weeks. So um, that has also all been cleaned, so it looks um, in a pretty good condition, but it's not really. So I did some initial testing, I removed all of the 20 three and a half inch hard disks out of it uh, because I wanted to test the power supply. So that was plugged in and after about three minutes it just went bang and that was the end of that. Uh, the power supply is currently off getting repaired um, so I'm waiting for that to come back. Now in the meantime um, what I wanted to do was go through all of the disks that are in the array and see how many are still working. Uh, and I have done that, I've been through every single disc, plugged it into my PC, and done some basic um, checks. So can I read sectors? Can I write sectors? Can I seek properly? All that sort of stuff. And through that testing, I found four discs that were bad, as in completely dead, wouldn't, they spun up, um, two wouldn't even initialize, and two just through um, uh, media areas when you, ever, you try to read or write anything. So after that happened, I actually put a plea out onto Twitter uh, because I wanted to see whether I could find some more of the discs that are actually used in the Dylan. So these are um, some of the dead discs. Um, these two were um, completely not non-functional. Um, these are made by Fujitsu and they are specifically the M1606SAU. So I put a plea out onto Twitter to find me some of these discs. Now, the first thing you're probably going to ask is, well, can't you use any disc? Uh, the answer is no. Um, there's going to be certain limitations. Um, I don't specifically know that the Dylan definitely needs these discs, but because this is quite a complex task, I have to re repair the Dylan, test it, get all the discs back in, get everything reconfigured and set back up. What I don't want to be doing is um, struggling trying to get things working and the reason why it isn't is because the discs don't match or some other stupid reason like that. What I want to do is um, get the, the array back to where it should be and then I can do some testing and if it all works then, that's when I can start looking at swapping things out um, and changing things around. Because at least then I will know that I've got a working base that I can try things from. After that uh, plea on Twitter, um, I managed to find these two discs. These are exactly the right model. And um, these came from the USA and they cost me about a hundred pounds uh, for the two um, with a little bit of shipping on top. These have been tested and are working, so we now have um, 18 um, what we believe is working discs. So what happens about the other two? So what I'm going to try is um, one or two of these um, new 
SCSI to SD adapters. Um, this particular one is the Zulu SCSI RP2040. Um, it's made by Rabbit Hole Computing. Um, so I've bought these two as a test. I can justify spending money on these um, two drives. I can put them in the Dillon, see where we go. If they work, then we've, we've got a really good solution. If they don't work, then I can just repurpose them and replace the system and shared disks in the HAL with these, so they won't go wasted. Um, the hope is though that these will work in the Dillon along beside the 18 other spinning disks. Um, and if that does prove to be workable, then there's it's highly likely I will just go out and buy um, 20 of these in one go and just convert the whole array um, to use the Zulu SCSI with a, an SD card. Right, so let's give you a quick tour on the Dylan disk array. So as I said before, this is a 5U crate, um, contains 20 hard disks and all the control electronics to run them. So let's take the lid off. Um, So as you can see, there is a big space in the middle. Um, that is where the power supply should be. Um, as I said, I plugged this in, it went, it went bang, and um, that is off being repaired by a good friend. Thank you very much, you know who you are. Um, the rest of the electronics is here to um, control all of the discs. Now, the way that the uh, Dylan works, it was quite a revolutionary idea at the time. Um, Quantel called it um, their chatter disk technology. Now, the way it works is there's a, an interconnect between the Dylan disk array and the HAL. It is um, digital, so it's capable of transporting all of the uncompressed digital video that um, HAL deals with. So that is done over a proprietary link that Quantel developed themselves. Um, the cable uh, uses the 100-way SCSI 2 type um, connectors, so really big chunky things. Um, that um, contains quite a lot of signals, um, but it's mostly the um, data bus for the video. Now that is a 16-bit wide bus that runs at 20 megahertz. So that gives us about, um, what, 340 megabits per second? Um, data rates between the um, the Dylan and the HAL. Uh, there is some other signals as well, like the control signals, um, how HAL talks to the Dylan to get it to do what it wants. Um, the connection comes in from HAL. Uh, when the system boots up, HAL will load over a special link the program which is in um, a transputer that's on this, uh, which controls all the rest of the logic. Uh, once that boots up, it then um, starts talking to HAL and then it will start then spinning up all of the 20 disks in a particular sequence. Um, this is partial, this is due for two reasons. Um, firstly, you don't want to spin up 20 disks all at once because um, you put a massive load on the power supply and you just don't need to. So um, it powers up disks um, in pairs and um, after a a minute or so, um, all the discs are spun up and we're all ready to go. So the video comes streaming into, into this and all of this logic here chops up that video into little sections and then sends it out to each of the 20 discs. So one frame of video gets chopped up and split over, over 20 of the discs in one go. <laughs> That's how they get the bandwidth uh, from these consumer grade um, hard discs. Um, that can normally only do um, four, four to five megabytes a second. So that means that uh, because you're talking to all 20 disks at the same time, um, each disk has to be on its own SCSI controller. Uh, and indeed there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten um, SCSI controllers all the way along that back edge and it's exactly the same along the front as well. Um, every single disk also has its own, its own RAM buffer, and that's, in essence, um, a Quantel Dylan. Um, there's a little bit more to it. Um, there is uh, lots of um, 
engineering menus and various things that the Dylan does to watch um, the discs um, for any future problems. Um, it can flag up what it thinks might be a faulty disc or one that's going faulty. Um, and there is also um, one of the drives is a parity disc. So as the data is written in, a parity is created and that's written to a separate disc. And that allows you to um, recover lost one lost disc. So if, uh, if you're using this and one disc just completely dies, you can take it out, put a new one in, and it will rebuild the data that's, uh, that's been missing. So that is my quick update video. I am going to be doing a little bit of work with the um, Zulu scuzzies because I need to do some soldering. Um, I need to do some testing and I am, as I said, I'm waiting for the power supply to come back as well. So until that comes back, uh, there's not really much more I'm going to be able to do. So that means that it might be a, a, a week or so before I manage to uh, get around to making a proper um, update video and actually show you some of this actually working. Okay, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.